The victory of the Duke of Wellington at the Battle of Waterloo brought to an end Napoleon's ambition to rule Europe and on the 20th of November 1815, a war with France that had lasted almost 22 years. Britain emerged triumphant, but with massive debts and an economy ill-suited for peace. Orders for military supplies dried up. Unprofitable land used to feed Britain during naval blockades was abandoned and around 300,000 soldiers, many of whom were disabled, returned home and began looking for work. Unemployment began to soar. The Tory government, led by Lord Liverpool, passed the Corn Law 1815 in an attempt to help British farming by restricting the import of cheap foreign grain. This benefited the landowning classes, but kept the cost of bread high and depressed the market for manufactured goods. In the same year, the eruption of Mount Tambra in Indonesia created a dust cloud that caused catastrophic global crop failures. Working people in Britain began to starve. Unemployment and starvation led to calls for the reform of Parliament. In the 1818 election, only 320,000 out of a population of 10 million had the vote. This equated to 13% of adult men with most women unable to meet the voting property qualification. Not that this made a difference in the two-thirds of constituencies that didn't have a poll in 1818, where the candidates were unopposed. Half of these were rotten or pocket boroughs controlled by a local aristocratic patron. If the ruling political classes would not intervene to improve the lives of ordinary people, the people would look for ways to elect new representatives who would. During the war, the British state, fearing a French-style revolution, had clamped down hard on calls for political reform. Habeas corpus was suspended, allowing the authorities to imprison people without charge, and seditious meetings inciting rebellion or public protest were banned. Despite this, years of pent-up frustration with low wages and appalling living conditions boiled over into rioting and widespread vandalism of labour-saving industrial machinery. In August 1819, the radical orator Henry Hunt was invited to Manchester to take part in a mock election for a workers' representative. At this time, Manchester had no direct representation of its own in Parliament. The local magistrates banned what they deemed an illegal election to be held on the 9th at St. Peter's Field after consulting with the Home Secretary, Lord Sidmouth. A less provocative pro-reform rally involving Hunt was then planned for the 16th of August. Local workers arrived in contingents wearing their Sunday best, carrying flags and banners. Around 60,000 people assembled, including many women and children. Members of the Manchester Female Reform Society, led by Mary Files, escorted Hunt to the platform. What occurred next remains one of the most infamous episodes in British political history. Overawed by the size of the crowd, the magistrate, William Hulton, ordered the arrest of Hunt and the other speakers. Accounts then differ as to whether the Riot Act was read, which would have legally compelled the reformers to disperse. In any case, the inexperienced Manchester and Salford Yeomanry advanced on the platform with their sabres drawn, followed shortly afterward by the 15th Hussars, a professional cavalry regiment. In the chaotic scenes that followed, at least 11 men and four women were killed and over 600 injured, with more dying of their wounds later. The press, mocking the patriotic memory of Waterloo, immediately dubbed the massacre Peterloo.